Okay, hello. Uh, welcome back to P7. Today we are going to do practice management. We're going to start practice management. That's chapter 3 of uh, your syllabus. As you can see, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 chapters. As I told you guys earlier, current issues is not really a chapter. It's something we will talk about in one lecture. We won't really spend a lot of time here. But as you can just see, the syllabus is very small. And practice management is considerably one of the very important topics in your P7 studies. You haven't really talked about this in F8. You might would have thought that you have talked about this in F8, but this is a new topic, okay? Uh, here they will talk to you, talk about advertisements, they'll talk about publicity, they'll talk about quality control. Now, you know, when you're talking about these things, you'll be thinking, hey, dude, we talked about uh, lowballing and stuff like that in F8 as well. Yeah, okay. But, you know, to be honest with you, uh, this is the real deal. Okay, you'll have a question on this. You might have half a question on it. You might have a question that's partially based on practice management or a first question that's 50 marks in P7. That's probably, mm, I don't know, 30 or 40 percent of it comes from practice management. So this is something you would really want to take good care of. Okay, now regulatory framework. Yeah, if you still are not very sure about these things, Never mind. Professional ethics, con ethical considerations. Yes, that's important. And practice management is equally important as compared to any other topics that we're going to be talking about. Okay, uh, let's talk about quality control. So this lecture will comprise of these topics over here, quality control. Let's uh, dig in right into it and see what we are dealing with over here. So um, let's talk about quality control. As you guys know about this, so I'm just going to be very brief in the terms of explaining uh, these topics. Okay, so engagement partner. Who's an engagement partner? The person who is responsible for the audit performance, for the audit reporting, who is actually the leader of the team, okay? Now, uh, yeah, Poof. engagement quality control review. Now, this is something that, uh, okay, how can I tell you? It's a control control, quality control review. Uh, it's provide an objective evaluation before signing the report. You'll just make sure how the quality of the audit was. So, in the question, they can say, in the question they can say that a lot of trainees were uh, doing the work, and the audit supervisor did not really uh, went checking uh, on the audit files, audit papers, working papers, and stuff. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be a problem for you because the quality control was poor. Okay. Uh, so that's the quality control review. Review is like a file or a letter that you prepared giving a review of how the quality was and then there's a reviewer who the person who has written this review. Okay. Engagement team is uh, the team, the partner and all the staff that's, uh, I'm sorry, that all the staff that's uh, performing the audit and stuff. So uh, that's the engagement team. The firm is the person, the audit firm that you're associated with. Inspection. Uh, it provides the evidence of compliance with the firm's quality and listed entity. What are listed entity? Listed entities are the, those are on the stake or stake market. Or stock, I'm sorry, stock market, not stake market. I don't know what's happening to me. I'm very hungry. I'm thinking of a steak right now. Anyway, uh, monitoring it evaluates the firm's quality control procedure. So this is how you will be like, okay, how, okay, we're going to do the audit. Okay. Like imagine you're in an audit firm, you're doing the audit. That's fine. You do that every day, but wait, there once will come a time when you'll be thinking, okay, we're doing something. But do you think we have to do something? We have to do it that way. Can't we think of another way to do it? You know? So probably you'll be like, okay, you know what? Let's monitor our performance. You'll have to monitor your performance. You wouldn't know how good you're doing un until you monitor your performance. Uh, okay, moving forward, principle and purpose. As you can see, this is a very common sense kind of question. So if you know what that thing is, just ignore what I said. You can move forward from the audio. Uh, so this is a very introductory topic, okay? Firms need to sh be sure that audits per audits that perform meet quality standards. Now, this is to reduce any professional litigation, anything that says that hey, you didn't perform the audit very well, you're under, you are in a lot of trouble, dude. No, not happening. Okay, that's not gonna happen. So there are two standards on quality control. Like I said earlier, you do not have to remember this. You really don't need to remember this. Mm, there are two at the firm level or at an individual audit levels that means every client's level okay so at the firm level you have to make sure your your staff or the people who are whom you're involved with they're ethical they know what ethics is mm, their client relations how are you when dealing with clients 
leadership who are the people leading the teams that's very important and then you have human resources where you talk about <clears throat> how much staff do you have how much staff you need and stuff like that and then you have engagement performance how you're gonna perform the engagement how you're gonna plan it up and everything and finally you come up with monitoring how you're gonna monitor the performance okay so you will, we will look into this in more detail later uh, but there's an exam question there's some quiz that you might want to do uh, moving on elements of quality control uh, system now a quality control the, on a firm level you'll have to look at the leadership okay in turn what's the culture of the organization how the training and appraisal and what's the mission statement now mission statement is like uh, what do you want to do okay it's, it's just a slogan um, for a company like slogan for a product makes sense uh, and and you cannot say that you have a slogan for a company, right? So you have a slogan for a company that's called mission statement So more or less the same thing, but you know different meanings different Ways of saying it then you have com commercial considerations over override quality And then you have pay and benefit and then you have resources but available to support quality And this isn't much that you really would want to uh, you know look into this is uh, not really Something you should be worried about, okay? Then you have HR that you need to be taken care, care of. You have uh, engagement issues. You have to do all the planning. I would leave this as supervision, review, monitoring, and ethical requirements. I've explained this in the previous slide. I would leave this up to you. I want you guys to read it through. And if you have any questions whatsoever, if you have any problems, for example, you have a problem, say, uh, dude, I can't, I can't understand what it means by ensure CD, CPD is kept up to date. Okay, CPD is continuous prof professional development, but still, I mean, for example, you don't know what that is, so you can just text me, you can just email me, you can just ask me mm, what you have to do on this. Okay, good. So, what are the reviews? They have there's a hot review is carried about carried out before the audit is signed. Hot review is basically something that you just do it very quickly. The senior managers will do, and they will look into the company. They will look into the um, engagement, and they will be like, okay, let's do something about it and stuff like that. Call review is after everything is done, after the audit report is signed, and it's just a, a method of. A, giving recommendations for the future. Now, hot review is basically when you will look into all these things. I want you to read it, okay? Look into all these things. Now, hot review is basically done by an audit manager, for example. I'll give you an example. Uh, hot review is done by an audit manager. Now, audit manager will go to the, see the audit file. He will review all the working papers. He will talk to the audit team. And he will uh, use his own professional judgment, skepticism to make sure everything is up to date, everything is proper and stuff like that okay that's a hot review and then he will suggest or he will recommend or he whatever he has to do to the audit partner to, to sign the audit report cold review on the other hand is when when it's done you'll just look in the file and say you know what let give me the file let's discuss it let's see what we could do even better okay uh, cool I think that's clear that's important okay hot review cold review it's, 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 it's a good thing to know about that I, I don't know if there was anything like this in the exam before but I'll be very happy if this comes up and you guys are um, you know you guys are familiar with these terms so yeah uh, so direction and supervision and perform direction supervision and performance now directing the engagement team means to telling them about their ethical responsibilities making sure that you're ethical making sure you can resign before you have to resign if there's any conflict and stuff like that and then finally you have to use your professional skepticism very important you have to be very skeptical as a person from Pakistan I have to say that we are naturally gifted with skepticism now, we are always thinking negative before the positive so but in Western terms skepticism is something they have to acquire it's not uh, given to us from the time we are born now objectives of the work to be performed the nature of the entities I don't think I really have to explain you guys this supervision that's included is this the review includes this it's a very common sense I, I, I would really find myself stupid uh, if I have to explain this to you guys so I want you guys to read it and if you find anything that's uh, concerning I am always here for you guys now engagement partners review of work performed now he has to make sure the critical areas of judgment and the, what are the significant risks uh, so critical areas of judgment probably when the management gives you a management letter 
for evidence. That's the critical area of judgment. Are you going to believe them? Is it, is it worth believing that? Do you think it's risky? You know, stuff like that. Then you have significant risk. Uh, what are the risks involving this company? For example, it's a tobacco company. And so what are the risks? Uh, lung cancer is a very, very good risk in the company. So you have to, you might have to be very careful with the lawsuits. Now, a lot of tobacco companies don't get any lung cancer lawsuits. Now, but companies with timber and stuff like that who cannot recycle their products, they have uh, a lot of uh, problems with these kind of things. Okay. So engagement quality control review, uh, are, the, are these things, like I said, read it through and let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. Now, assigning the audit team. Like, this this is something you have to study before in FA. So you need to consider the team's competence and capabilities, okay? This means that looking at understanding and experience with similar audits. For example, if one of you, you have a lot of teams in the auditor, okay? Now, now one team is very familiar with cash-based business. For example, restaurants and uh, a money exchange business and stuff like that. The other company is very much into dealing with hotels, uh, and stuff uh, other things similar to that mm, and finally there are a lot of companies that are a lot of stuff that's familiar with uh, manufacturing now this company is a manufacturing company so you will choose your audit team who has similar audit experience you can't choose different people for different jobs okay understand of the professional standards and regulations make sure you meet the requirements your IT expertise should be top-notch making sure that whatever accounting they're giving you or whatever internal audit documents they are giving you, you know how to work through them. Okay. Now, for example, one time I was uh, using we actually use a, lo uh, a lot of MYOB audit accounting software. Uh, it's an Australian accounting software, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, one time we we came across this um, some other accounting software known as QuickTime accounting, and uh, I had a lot of trouble going about it. I, I had a lot of problems understanding how. I was supposed to, you know, get the general ledgers, how to get uh, other other sorts of ledgers, the bank reconciliation. So I, I, I really had a lot of trouble. I had to Google everything every few minutes. Uh, I blame my audit manager for doing that to me. <laughs> Mm, and so you need to have a knowledge of the client's industry, what they used to do, what they're doing right now, who are the competitors and stuff like that. There, then you need the ability to apply your professional judgment. Okay, I don't explain. I don't really need to explain that. Then, then you have to understand the firm's quality control policies. Okay. Having said that, we are moving forward to the next slide. I suppose this is the last one. Uh, yep, yeah, this is the last one. Okay, good. Individual level quality control is ISA, ISA 220, quality control for audit of financial information. Now, as I said before, you don't have to remember the auditing standards numbers, okay? Mm, client acceptance procedures. Now, this should be in full documentation. There should be a letter that's signed by the engagement partner and uh, signed by your client. Uh, we have in this country, call it, we call it the consent to act letter that's signed by the auditor and then you have an engagement letter. Uh, that's signed by both the parties and the directors. Mm. Then uh, uh, there's a procedure you have to do. Then you have to make sure you do the professional clearance. Professional clearance is basically calling the previous client uh, auditor mm, of your client and making sure they don't have anything to report. And making sure you don't have any obligate, uh, you don't have any problems in the future. For example, let's say you're getting married to someone, right? And a few days later, you realize that the person was married to another person before you. Now, that's going to be a bit of a problem for you and for the other person and for the person whom you're married, right? And so, you know, before getting yourself into sort of a problematic thing, just do a professional clearance, you know, just to be safe. In consideration of any conflict of interest, make sure there is no conflict of interest. This is very important to make sure you don't have any problems later, you don't get intimidated by your client and stuff like that. Now then you have to do your money laundering procedures. I've explained this very much in detail in the previous lectures. If you still have any problems with it, let me know. Then you have your engagement team. As we talked about this earlier, you need to have enough knowledge. You need to make sure they have similar skills. They know how, what they're doing. They have a professional judgment. Professional standards. I think I'm talking again and again about the same thing, right? Don't you? Don't you feel the same way? Where's the direction? Who's given what responsibility? What's the objective? What they need to do? The nature of the client's business needs to be known. 
uh, what are the risk related issues as I told before uh, lawsuits can be very risky and how to deal with the problems that may arise during the time for example a fire and stuff like that so you need to follow your accounting standards to make sure you do whatever you have to do okay and then you have supervision that's something you need to be very uh, I don't know there's this is this is this is not something I should be worried about mm, read it through review you need to do the review I've already talked about this and finally you have consultation where you talk to your engagement partner about the consultation and other matters of that might concern you in an audit level um, there the issue on which the consultation was sought and the results of the consultation so you need to prepare a document if you do this uh, having said that I'm think, I think I'm gonna stop this recording now and uh, I'll see you guys in the next sec section uh, talking about advertisement, publicity and obtaining financial work and what fees to charge from these type of people. Thank you very much and have a good day.